right, let's dive deep today. We're going to be tackling generative AI. Ooh, exciting. But but we're not just talking about how to use it. Okay. We're going behind the scenes right. and exploring the tech stack gotcha. that makes all those incredible AI applications possible. Yeah, yeah. Think of it like this. Okay. You wouldn't build a house by just, you know, throwing bricks around, right? Yeah, right. You need a blueprint. Yeah. The Gen AI tech stack is that blueprint for AI. That's a great way to put it. And and what's so cool is that even if you're not like a tech expert, yeah. understanding these building blocks, you know, helps you appreciate totally. what Gen AI for sure. can't do. Okay, so let's unpack this blueprint. Yeah. One of our sources breaks down the generative AI tech stack into layers. Okay. Kind of like a cake. I like that analogy. You start with the found the the bottom layer. Okay. Which is the infrastructure. Uh -huh. This is the like heavy lifting part of the process, you right. know? The real powerhouse behind AI. So who are the big names eh. in this infrastructure layer? Well, you've got companies like Nvidia. Oh yeah. Creating those powerful GPUs needed for all that intense AI processing. Right. And then there are the giants of the cloud. Okay. Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Azure. Yep. And together.ai they provide the like virtual space where all the AI magic happens. So we've got the power source yeah. and the space. What's next? Next up, the foundation models. Ooh. Think of this layer as the brains of the mm. operation. Right. These are the pre-trained AI models oh. created by companies like uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, and Cohere. Yeah. They've been trained on like mountains of data. Right. And they can be used as is or fine-tuned for specific tasks. Ah, so these are the names we see popping up everywhere exactly. that we hear about AI breakthroughs. Exactly. Yeah. These models can do some pretty amazing things, like writing different kinds of creative content, oh. translating languages, and even composing music. Oh, wow. But, but even with all these smarts, yeah. they need a way to access and organize information, right? Makes sense. Yeah. So what keeps it all organized? Where, where does AI store... Mm, okay all that data it needs. That's where the retrieval layer comes in. Oh yeah. Specifically vector databases. Okay. Think of them as super efficient librarians. Right. For AI. Yeah. Companies like Pinecone and Weaviate are key players here. Vector databases. That sounds pretty technical. What what are they exactly? Imagine trying to find a specific piece of information yeah. in a library with billions of books. Right. It would take forever. Right. 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 Yeah. Vector databases solve that problem for AI. Okay. They're like uh, lightning fast search engines mm -hmm. that can find the information an AI model needs, okay. even if it's like buried in a huge data set. So they're crucial yeah. for helping AI models make sense of all that data. Absolutely. Yeah. And they need to be fast and efficient yeah. because AI applications often deal with really complex information. Okay. So we've got the power, yeah. the brains, and the library. But, but who's coordinating? That's where the runtime different part. or the framework layer comes in. Okay. Frameworks like Langchain, Llama Index, and Hugging Face yeah. are like the conductors of an orchestra, yeah. making sure all the different parts of the AI system are yes. working together smoothly. So Langchain is the one making sure the AI that summarizes legal documents. That's a great. Is talking to the AI that drafts emails yeah. based on those summaries. That's a great example. That's incredible. Langchain is is known for its ability to like connect different AI tools. Yeah. Making it perfect for building like versatile applications. That's a lot of moving parts. Yes. Yeah. It seems like things could get pretty complicated. Yeah. How how do we make sure it all runs without a hitch? That's where the monitoring and orchestration layer steps in. Okay. It's all about quality control, right. making sure everything's running smoothly yeah. and efficiently. Okay. Think of tools like uh, Kubernetes for managing containers okay. and Prometheus for for keeping a close eye on performance. So this layer is kind of like the stage manager. Exactly. Making sure the show goes on without any technical difficulties. It's exactly. And no. finally, we reach the layer that users actually interact with okay the front-end hosting layer right this is where platforms like vercel and netlify come in yeah helping developers create those user-friendly interfaces right. that connect to all the ai magic happening behind the scenes so it's like uh designing the storefront for a shop that's a joke. you want it to be appealing yeah easy to navigate mm -hmm. even if the inner workings are complex that's a great way to put it right so there you have it yeah from the raw power of infrastructure to the sleek design of front-end hosting yeah that's our gen ai cake in a nutshell all right
We've got our foundational layers. Yes. Infrastructure, foundation models, retrieval layer, runtime framework, monitoring and orchestration, and front-end hosting. Ooh. Out of all these layers, what what stands out to you the most? You know, I I find particularly fascinating yeah. how specialized the runtime framework layer yeah. is becoming. Okay. Each framework seems to have its own strengths right. and focus areas. That, that's a great point. Uh, yeah. We should definitely dive deeper into that. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at some of the specific frameworks mentioned in our sources. Yeah, let's do it. Each one seems to bring something unique to the table. It's like having a toolbox. Yeah. Full of specialized tools right. for different AI tasks. Let's start with Lama Index. Okay. Since we were just talking about vector databases. Yeah. What's its specialty? Lama Index is all about making sense of like huge amounts of data. Yeah. It excels at uh, efficiently indexing and retrieving information. Okay. Especially when you're dealing with those massive data sets right. that we talked about. If, yeah. if your project involves a mountain of information, yeah. Lama Index is your go to framework. So it's like having a like a super powered research assistant because, that can sift through yeah. mountains of data yeah. and find exactly what you need in a snap. That's a great way to put it. Right. It's like having a research librarian who's Oof. read every book right. and can instantly recall any fact right. or quote you need. I can definitely see why that would be valuable Absolutely. for AI applications. Now what about Haystack? Yeah. How does it fit into this this framework landscape? Haystack is the search and question answering expert. Okay. Think of it as the the ultimate research assistant able yeah. to sift through like mountains of data yeah. and find the needle in the haystack. Well, it's it's particularly good at um understanding complex questions and finding the most relevant answers from like a sea of information. So if you're building an AI chatbot. Yeah. That needs to provide accurate and comprehensive answers yeah. to user questions. Right. Haystack would be a key component. Absolutely. Haystack is all about making information accessible yeah. and helping AI models understand the nuances of human language. That's right. Now, let's uh, shift gears a little bit okay. and talk about Microsoft Jarvis. Okay, Microsoft Jarvis. What's its, what's its claim to fame Whoa. in the world of Gen AI frameworks? As you might expect, Jarvis is like deeply integrated with the Microsoft ecosystem. Right. It excels at tasks like, you know, conversational AI mm -hmm. and automation, especially especially within that Microsoft world. Yeah, like if you're if you're working with Microsoft tools and services, right. Jarvis can be a really powerful ally. So it's like having a dedicated AI assistant exactly. for everything Microsoft. Exactly. And then we have Amazon Bedrock which is all about leveraging the vast resources of Amazon Web Services. AWS is a major player in the cloud space. It is. So I imagine Bedrock is a pretty comprehensive framework. It is. Bedrock provides access to like powerful foundation models, okay. like tools for managing those models, right. and seamless integration with other AWS services. Right. It's like having a one-stop shop for building and deploying sophisticated AI solutions wow. within that AWS ecosystem. So whether you're working with Microsoft or Amazon, yeah. there's a framework designed to make the most of those platforms. That's right. And then we have a framework that's all about you know, pushing the limits of have... AI performance. Performance is key in the world of AI, so I'm all ears. Yes. What makes it so special? Mesh TensorFlow is designed for handling those like really big, complex AI models. Okay. It uses a technique called distributed training, okay. which essentially means it can spread the workload okay. across multiple processors. So it's like having a team of supercomputers working together to train a single AI model. That's a great analogy. That's pretty wild. This allows Mesh TensorFlow to tackle challenges that, that would be like impossible yeah. for a single machine to handle. Right. It's pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI. That's impressive. Now, now we can't forget about OpenAI Swarm. Ah, yes. Swarm is a is a fascinating one yeah. because it's still in its early stages. Right. But it has the potential to like revolutionize how we think about AI. Oh. Tell me more. Swarm is all about enabling AIs okay. to communicate and collaborate with each other. Wow. It's like creating a network of mm -hmm. intelligent agents that can work together okay. to solve complex problems. So instead of individual AIs working in isolation, right. we could have teams of AIs exactly. sharing information yeah. and learning from each other. Yeah. That opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Exactly. It's like going from a solo musician right. to a full orchestra. 
imagine the the symphony of knowledge that could be created. All right, so we've got Langchain for connecting AI tools. Yes. Lamy Index for data crunching. Uh -huh. Haystack for search and Q&A. Right. Microsoft Jarvis for Microsoft integration. Yeah. Amazon Bedrock for AWS solutions. Yes. Mesh TensorFlow for performance. Mm -hmm. And OpenAI Swarm for AI collaboration. That's quite a lineup. It is. All and right. we have to remember, this is just a snapshot right. of what's out there. Yeah. The world of Gen AI is constantly evolving. Yeah. With new frameworks and tools emerging all the time. It's it's mind-boggling to think about all the innovation happening in this field. Yeah. But but with all these different frameworks and yeah. layers, why should the average person care that's a, about the Gen AI tech stack? That's a great question. It's easy to get lost yeah. in all the technical details. For sure. But but understanding the tech stack, yeah, even yeah. at a high level, right. empowers you in some really important ways. I'm all for feeling empowered, so tell me more. First, it helps you ask better questions okay. about AI applications. Okay. When you when you understand what's happening under the hood, right? Uh, yeah. You can dig deeper into how an AI tool works, okay. what its strengths and limitations are, right. and whether it's the right fit for your needs. So instead of just accepting AI as magic, exactly. we can start to see it as a powerful tool right. with specific capabilities and limitations. Exactly. Yeah. And second, yeah. This understanding helps you see both the possibilities uh, and the limitations of Gen yeah. AI more more clearly. Yeah. You'll you'll recognize the types of problems AI is well suited for. Yeah. And where it might fall short. That's incredibly important, especially in a world where AI is being hyped up everywhere we turn. Absolutely. You need to be able to like cut through the hype right. and make informed decisions about yeah. how AI can be used responsibly and effectively. 100%. And finally, yeah. knowing about the tech stack equips yeah. to navigate this rapidly changing landscape yeah. as new technologies emerge, right. you'll have a framework for understanding where they fit into the bigger picture. It's like having a roadmap. Precisely. For the AI revolution. Speaking of navigating this landscape, yeah. we should talk about the major cloud providers. Okay. Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure, they're all heavily invested in Gen AI. They are, and they and they each seem to have their own approach to the Gen AI tech stack. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to get a sense of how they're tackling this. Well, let's start with Google Cloud. Okay. They've got some powerful tools for handling the, the infrastructure layer. All right. For example, they offer uh, compute engine right. and Kubernetes engine for scalable computing power, right. along with uh, TPUs, which are, are specialized processors Oops. designed to like speed up machine learning tasks. So Google Cloud is making sure you have the raw computing power That's right. to handle even the most demanding AI workloads. That's right. And when it comes to the runtime framework layer, yeah. okay. Google Cloud has developed its own framework okay. called Vertex AI. Ah, so they're not just providing the building blocks, they're also creating their own tools exactly. for working with those blocks. Exactly. Vertex AI is designed to like simplify the process of yeah. building, training, and deploying machine learning models. Gotcha. It offers a wide range of like pre-built components and tools, right. making it making it easier for developers to yeah. get started with Gen AI. So it's like a streamlined toolkit for Gen AI development. That's within the Google Cloud ecosystem. That's a great way to put it. Okay, we've covered Google Cloud. Uh -huh. What about AWS? How are they approaching the Gen AI tech stack? AWS is taking a similar approach, providing a suite of services okay. that cover all layers of yeah. the stack okay. when it comes to infrastructure. Right. They offer EC2 instances with uh, powerful GPU capabilities. Okay. And their SageMaker platform right. is a is a game changer for model training and deployment. SageMaker sounds interesting. Can you tell us a bit more about how it works? SageMaker is a cloud-based machine learning platform okay. that provides everything you need okay. to build, train, and deploy machine learning models, so. including Gen AI models. Right. It offers a wide range of pre-built algorithms and tools, okay. as well as like the flexibility to use your own custom code. So it's like having a like a virtual machine learning lab at your fingertips. Exactly. And one of the key benefits of SageMaker okay. is that it handles all the infrastructure management for you. Oh. oh. You don't need to worry about setting up servers or oh. configuring software. It's yeah. all taken care of. That sounds like a huge time saver. It is. For developers. It allows developers to focus on the, the core task 
of yeah. building and refining their models right. rather than getting bogged down in like infrastructure management. So AWS is making AI development more accessible right. and efficient. And they're constantly innovating and adding new features to SageMaker. I'm sensing a pattern here. Both Google Cloud and AWS yes. are investing heavily in making Gen AI more accessible and user-friendly. Absolutely. They recognize the the transformative potential yeah. of Gen AI, okay. and they're making it easier for developers to harness that power. Right. We've covered Google Cloud and AWS. Mm -hmm. What about Azure? How does Microsoft's cloud platform Azure off fit into this Gen AI landscape? A comprehensive suite of services for Gen AI as well. Okay. For infrastructure. Right. They have uh, virtual machines. Okay. And Azure Kubernetes service. Okay. Providing providing scalable computing power for AI workloads. Okay. And when it comes to uh, model development and deployment, right. Azure ML is their their flagship offering. Okay, Azure ML, what's, what's its specialty? Azure ML is a cloud-based machine learning service oh. that provides a, a collaborative environment for building, okay. training, and deploying machine learning models. Okay. Including Gen AI models. Right. It offers a um, visual drag-and-drop interface. Okay. Making it easy to to create and manage like complex machine learning workflows. So it's like a visual design studio for AI development. That's a great way to describe it. Pretty cool. Azure ML also provides a wide range of pre-built algorithms, okay. tools for, for data exploration and preparation huh. and seamless integration with other Azure services. So Azure is also striving to make Gen AI development Thanks. more intuitive and accessible. They're they're focusing on providing a user-friendly experience. Right. Especially for those who are new to machine learning. It's exciting to see how these cloud providers it is. are shaping the future of Gen AI. But before we move on, oh, okay. I want to circle back to something. Yeah. We touched on earlier vector databases. Uh -huh. Our source specifically highlights single store. Yes. As an example. Single store is particularly interesting okay. because it can handle both uh, vector data, yeah. which is essential for Gen AI applications, right. and traditional relational data. So it's like a multi-talented database. Exactly. Able to work with different types of data seamlessly. Exactly. This makes it a powerful and flexible solution for building Gen AI applications right. that need to like integrate with existing systems and databases. I can see why that would be a huge advantage. It is. It's like having a universal translator for data. That's a great analogy. Yeah. It bridges the gap between the world of AI yeah. and the world of like traditional data management. Okay. Before we wrap up this deep dive, yes. I'm curious to get your take on the future of the Gen AI tech stack. Okay. What what trends are you seeing emerge? Well, one thing that's clear is that the stack is becoming more sophisticated okay. and specialized. Right. We're seeing the emergence of like more advanced monitoring and orchestration tools yeah. specifically designed for AI workloads. Okay. These tools provide like deeper insights Not into model performance, yeah. resource utilization, and potential bottlenecks. So it's about making AI applications more exactly efficient, reliable, and transparent. Exactly. We're also seeing a growing focus on security. Right. As AI applications become more prevalent yeah. and handle increasingly sensitive data. That makes sense. Yeah. Security is paramount. Absolutely. In any technology, but especially when we're talking about AI. Right. And the potential impact it can have. And another another exciting trend yeah. is the development of like specialized hardware okay. designed to to accelerate AI processing. So instead of relying on like general purpose processors, right. we're starting to see hardware. That's right. That's tailor-made for AI. These specialized chips can significantly boost the performance okay. of AI applications, right. enabling them to process information faster right. and more efficiently. That's incredible. It feels like we're on the cusp of a, we are. a major leap forward in AI capabilities. And the Gen AI tech stack is evolving to keep pace yeah. with these advancements. It's clear that the Gen AI landscape is, it is dynamic and constantly changing. Yeah. What's the key takeaway for our listeners? The key takeaway is that the Gen AI tech stack yeah. is not static. Right. It's constantly evolving and adapting right. to the needs of the AI landscape. Right. As AI continues to transform our world, yes. understanding this stack will become even more crucial. It's like learning the language of AI yeah. so you can participate in the conversation. Yeah. And, and shape its future. That's a great way to put it. It's about becoming an informed and engaged citizen yeah. in the age of AI. Well said. 
Okay, deep divers, we've covered a lot of ground in this in this episode. We have. We uh, we explored the layers of the Genii tech stack. Yes. From the powerful infrastructure that provides the foundation. Right. To the to the user friendly interfaces that bring AI to life. Yeah. And um, we also delved into some of the key frameworks. Yeah. Driving this revolution. Yeah. Each with its own unique strengths and applications. And we discussed why understanding this tech stack matters. Yeah. Even if you're not a developer. Absolutely. It's about empowering yourself to ask better questions. Right. See the possibilities and limitations of AI more clearly. Yeah. And navigate the ever-evolving landscape of yeah. this transformative technology. But here's the thing. Yeah. We've we've only scratched the surface. All right. The world of Gen AI is vast it's and correct. constantly expanding. That's what makes it so exciting. It is. There's there's always something new to discover and explore. Exactly. And that's why I want to leave you with a final thought-provoking question. Okay. If you could build AI application, what would it be? Ooh, I love this question. It's it's like a challenge to to unleash our creativity. Yeah. And imagine how AI could be used to solve problems. Right. Create new possibilities. Yeah. Or or simply make life more interesting. Exactly. And what parts of the tech stack yeah. would you need to focus on right. to bring your vision to life? Right. Which which frameworks would be best suited for your application? Right. What kind of infrastructure would you need? It's it's like taking all this knowledge yeah. we've gained about the Gen AI tech stack right. and putting it into action. Yeah. It's about moving from understanding Absolutely. to creating. Precisely. So deep divers, yeah. I encourage you to explore, mm -hmm. to experiment, yes. and to dream big. Dream big. The future of AI is being shaped right now. Yeah. And you have the power to be a part of it. And hey, if you come up with any mind-blowing AI app ideas, yes. we'd love to hear about them. Please. Share your thoughts and questions in the comments. Yeah. And let's keep this conversation going. Until next time, keep diving deep.